the mathematical system actions postulates and theorems yan ang pag-uusapan natin ngayon dito sa ating matsayang talakayan kaya stay tuned Hello grade 8 learners! For today's video, we will discuss the continuation of the mathematical system. We have actions, postulates, and theorems. With the learning competency, describes a mathematical system and illustrates the need for an axiomatic structure of mathematical system in general and in geometry in particular. So we have defined terms, undefined terms, postulates, and theorems. The mathematical system consists of undefined terms, defined terms, actions or postulates, and theorems. So in the previous videos, we have already discussed undefined terms and defined terms. So in this video, we are going to focus on the action or postulates and theorems. Ano nga ba yung actions and postulates na tinatawag natin? So in early Greek, considered postulates as general truths, common to all studies and actions as the truth relating to the special study at hand. These are statements that are considered true without proof or validation. Ibig sabihin, itong mga statements na ito ay ginagamit natin in geometry kahit hindi na natin kailangan pa ng evidences or proof. So specifically, when we say actions, actions is a self-evident or universally recognized truth. And yung postulate naman, postulates are our simplest and most fundamental statements will be given without proof. So ito yung mga ginagamit natin na statement na kahit na hindi na natin i-validate or hanapan ng evidences, so we will accept it as true statements. We have here examples of actions. Actions of equality. So we have what we call reflexive property of equality. So anong ibig sabihin ulit ng reflexive property? So reflexive property is for all real numbers P, P is equal to P. Meaning that a number is equal to itself. A variable is equal to itself. If we have a segment or a side, it is equal to itself. Yun ang tinatawag natin na reflexive property. For the second one, we have what we call the symmetric property. Ano naman ang symmetric property of equality? For all real numbers P and Q, then Q is equal to P. Okay? So dito, pag sinabi natin symmetric property, ibig sabihin, it is equal. So let's say we have A is equal to B, then B is equal to A. So kahit pagbalik na rin mo, yung position nila, they are still equal. So let's say we have X is equal to 5, that is still the same with 5 equals X. And then the third one, we have transitive property of equality. For all real numbers P, Q, and R, if P is equal to Q and Q is equal to R, then P is equal to R. So, anong mapapansin ninyo? Sabi niya dito, kung ang P ay equal sa Q at ang Q ay equal sa R, so, we can have our conclusion na itong P will be equal to R. Kasi nga, they have the same value which is Q. Okay, kaya meron tayong conclusion na P equals R. And then we have substitution property of equality. So ano naman ito? For all real numbers P and Q, 
if P is equal to Q, so we can substitute P in any of the expression. So, lagi natin ginagamit ito. Alimbawa, meron kang ex, uh, equation. So, we have x plus 5 is equal to 0. So, if x is equal to 3, so magkakaroon tayo ng expression or equation na 3 plus 5 equals 0. Okay, so ibig sabihin, substitute natin or ipapalit lang natin. So, in other cases, ginagamit natin ang substitute, the substitution property if we are going to substitute or replace a given value to the variable. Then we have here definitions, postulates, and theorems on points, lines, angles, and angle pairs. Isa-isahin natin. So, we have here a definition of midpoint. Ano naman yung tinatawag na midpoint? So, we have here in the illustration, if we have a segment AB, then AM is equal to MB. Okay? So, M is the midpoint of line segment AB. Okay? Kasi, kung ito ay isang buo, we have here AB. Tapos, kung magiging equal yung AM at saka yung MB, ibig sabihin, yung point M natin ay nasa middle or nasa pagitan ng point A and point B. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, ang midpoint natin dyan is point M. That is how we define a midpoint. The next one, we have definition of angle by sector. Ano naman ito? Okay, so when we say angle by sector, of course, nandun siya sa isang angle. Okay, an angle by sector of an angle is a ray that divides the angle into two congruent angles. Okay, so let's say meron tayo angle A, B, C. Okay, so ang tinatawag natin na angle by sector dyan is a ray. Ito, mula dito, ray. Yan, papunta doon sa side na yun. So, when we say ray that divides the angle into two congruent angles, so, hahatiin niya yung angle A, B, C into two congruent parts. So, ray BD is what we call the angle by sector of angle A, B, C. Okay, so we have here postulates. Example of postulates, we have segment addition postulate. For example, we have segment AC. Itong buong segment na ito. The measure of segment AC will be equal to the sum of the two other segments containing in the segment. Okay, yung nakapaloob dito sa segment AC. So, meron kang segment AB at saka segment BC. When we add these two segments, then it is equivalent to AC or segment AC. Another is we have what we call the angle addition postulate. Okay, paano naman ang angle addition postulate? So, it doesn't necessary na yung uh, nasa gitna na ray natin is an angle by sector hindi siya necessary. So, pwede natin i-apply ang angle addition postulate if we are going to have the measurement of uh, angle CAB. Okay? Makikita natin if D is a point in the interior of angle BAC or CAB, then pwede natin sabihin na yung angle angle uh, DAC eto yon or CAD plus yung angle BAD pag pinagsama natin itong dalawang to this will be equivalent to angle CAB okay yan ang tinatawag na angle addition postulate moving on with the angle pairs we have what we call supplementary angles 
angles can be supplementary if the sum of the measures of the two angles is 180 degrees. Ibig sabihin, pag pinagsama natin yung measurement ng dalawang angles, dapat ang value nila is equal to 180 degrees para masabi natin that they are supplementary. So let's say in the figure, we have two angles involved. Angle QWR and angle RWE. Since the measure of angle QWR is 115 and the measure of angle RWE is equal to 65, so when we get the sum that is equivalent to 180, so we can say now that angle QWR and angle RWE are supplementary angles. Another pair of angles, we have complementary angles. If the sum of the measures of the two angles is 90, then the angles are complementary. Okay, kanina, pag supplementary, 180 degrees. This time, kapag complementary, it is, the sum is 90 degrees. So, let's say in the figure, we have the angle UST. Okay, so makikita natin that yung angle UST is already 90 degrees. So, kung meron kang ray dito sa pagitan nila, meron kang dalawang angles which are angle TSR and angle USR. So, if the measure of TSR is 33.5, then we can say that the measure of angle USR will be 56.5. So, that the sum of these two angles will be equivalent to 90 degrees. Para masabi natin that Angle TSR and angle USR are complementary angles. Another pair of angles, so we have linear pair. If two angles are supplementary, they form a linear pair. Linear pair can be defined as a pair of angles that form a line. The line indicates a straight angle that measures 180 degrees. Okay, so let's say we have angle CED and angle SED. Okay, so meron tayong dalawang angles dito na nakapag-form ng straight line kapag pinagsama sila. Okay, so meron tayo common side na ED. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, if these two angles form a line, then they are called linear pairs. So, we have here a linear pair postulate. Ano bang masasabi natin sa linear pair of angles? So, we have, if two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. Okay, so meron tayong halimbawa angle 1 and angle 2 form a linear pair. So angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary. So when we get the sum of the, these two angles, then their sum is equal to 180 degrees. Another is we have what we call the vertical angles. Vertical angles are non-adjacent angles formed by two intersecting lines. So, let's say we have PX intersect with DF. Okay, so these are the two intersecting lines. Saan dito yung tinatawag natin na vertical angles? Sabi niya kasi they are non-adjacent. So, when we say non-adjacent, ito yung mga angles na merong common vertex pero walang common side. Okay? So, kung ito yung common vertex, halimbawa, meron kang angle POD para hindi siya common sa isang side ng another angle, 
kailangan hindi sila magkatabi. Okay, so ang vertical angles, ang kapares niya will be angle FOX. Okay, so another pair we have POF, ito yon, and the angle DOX. So those are what we call vertical angles. So we have the vertical angles theorem. Vertical angles are congruent. So sabi natin kanina, angle POD and FOX are vertical angles. Angle POF and angle DOX are vertical angles. So we can now say, based on the theorems, that these two angles are congruent. So we have angle POD is congruent to angle FOX. Another pair is angle POF is congruent to angle DOX. So let's move on with the definitions and theorems on triangles. So we have triangle. It is a figure formed by three segments joining three non-collinear points. The sum of the measures of the interior angles of a triangle is equivalent to 180 degrees. So let's say we have this example. So we have here triangle ABC with the interior angles angle A, angle B, and angle C. So based on the theorem, if we are going to get the sum of the measures of these two angles, their measures will be equivalent to 180 degrees. In a triangle, we also have what we call exterior angle of a triangle. It is an angle that forms a linear pair with an interior angle of a triangle when a side of the triangle is extended. So let's say in the figure, meron kang triangle ABC. Kapag in-extend natin, pag sinabi natin extend, dudugtungan natin. In-extend natin ang bawat side ng triangle, okay, magkakaroon tayo ngayon ng exterior angle. Okay? So itong angle F na ito, angle E, and angle D are what we call the exterior angle of a triangle. So we have exterior angle theorem. The measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the measure of the two remote interior angles of the triangle. Paano ito? So let's consider the given figure. Identify muna natin kung ano yung tinatawag natin na exterior angle at saka remote interior angles. In the figure, makikita natin na yung angle 4 is formed by extending this side of the triangle. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, pag in-extend natin, magkakaroon tayo ng exterior angle, which is what we call angle 4. Okay, ano naman yung tinatawag na remote interior angles? Titingin tayo sa mga interior angles. Ang interior angles natin ay 1, 2, at saka 3. Pag sinabing remote, nasa malayo. Okay, hindi niya katabi yung exterior angle natin. So, yung dalawang angles na malayo sa angle 4 ay angle 1 and angle 2. So, ibig sabihin, angle 1 and angle 2 are what we call the remote interior angles. So, based on the theorem, pag hinanap natin ang measure ng exterior angle natin, which is angle 4, that is equivalent to the sum of the measures of the two remote interior angles. Kaya sa equation, measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of the exterior angle, which is angle 4. Okay, so let's consider this figure. Ang dalawang interior, remote interior angles natin ay 80 at 40. Ito yung measurement nila. So, 80 plus 40 is 120. That's why ang measurement ng 
exterior angle natin is equivalent to 120 degrees. So we have here isosceles triangle. It is a type of a triangle, wherein it is a triangle with two congruent sides. So let's consider our example. Okay, so we're on time given triangle. The two congruent sides are what we call the legs. Okay, and of course, yung side na hindi congruent sa dalawang legs ay tinatawag natin na base. The angle between the two legs ay ta ang tawag natin doon ay vertex angle. So, ito yun. And, the two other angles are what we call the base angles. Okay, so ano nga ba ang meron sa isosceles triangle theorem? If two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite these two sides are congruent. Okay. So, halimbawa, sabi niya sa isosceles triangle theorem, kapag daw ang dalawang sides niya ay congruent, yung base angles opposite these sides ay congruent din. Okay? So, let's say we have here in the figure, in triangle ABC, if AB is congruent to BC, then... The base angles angle A and angle C are also congruent. And conversely, if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite those two angles are congruent. So, ibig sabihin, babalik ta rin lang natin. Kung angle A ay congruent sa angle C, then ang conclusion natin, we have congruent sides. AB is congruent to BC. Okay, so that is the isosceles triangle theorem and its converse. Another type of a triangle here is what we call equilateral triangle. So when we say equilateral, we have equal sides. Meaning, all sides are congruent. So, all three sides of triangle PQR are congruent. We can say that PQ is congruent to QR and congruent to PR. So, we have equilateral triangle theorem. All equilateral triangles are equiangular. Ibig sabihin, Kapag ang triangle daw ay equilateral, equal ang sides, yung kanyang mga angles ay equiangular or equal din. And all equiangular triangles are equilateral. Ibig sabihin, kapag pare-parehas ang measurement ng angles, pare-parehas din ang measurement ng sides. The sides and angles of a triangle. So let's consider the figure. In triangle ABC, the sides are side AB, side BC, and side AC. And the angles of a triangle are angle A, angle B, and angle C. Angle B, ito, angle B is opposite of C, side C. Ito, opposite, katapat niya. Okay? And AC is opposite angle B. Angle A is opposite BC. Ito yung angle A at ang katapat niya side ay B, C. And B, C, of course, is opposite of angle A. And angle C is opposite of side A, B. And A, B is opposite of angle C. The included angle of a triangle. 
Included angle is the angle formed by two distinct sides of a triangle. Halimbawa, meron tayong side AB and side BC. Yung tinatawag natin na included angle dyan ay yung angle na nakapagitan sa AB and BC. And that is angle B. Or, we can say that it is angle a, B, C. We can say now that angle A, B, C is the included angle of side A, B, and B, C. So another is if we have side A, B, and side A, C. The included angle is angle A. So ibig sabihin yung angle A ay nasa pagitan ng A, B, and A, C. Angle A can also named as angle BAC or CAB. We can now say that angle BAC is the included angle of sides AB and AC. And then, if we have AC and BC, the included angle is angle C or angle ACB. Meaning, angle ACB is the included angle of AC and BC. We also have the included side of a triangle. Included side is the side common to two angles of a triangle. Considering the figure, so if we have angle A and angle B, the included side is side AB. So we can now say that AB is the included side of angle A and angle B. Another is if we have B and angle C. The included side is BC. So we can say now that BC is the included side of angle B and angle C. Then, if we have angle A and angle C, the included side is side AC. So we can say now that AC is the included side of angle A and angle C. Now it's your turn. Get your pen and paper and do this activity. And that's for today, guys. Remember that those axioms, postulates, and theorems can be used in the next lessons. Mag-practice at mag upang lalong maging mat galing. Again, this is Teacher Daddy na nagsasabing, Practice makes perfect. Do not forget to like, subscribe, and share. Thanks for watching! Thank you.